In this Blender tutorial, we'll use Geometry Nodes to create this cool data flow, light tornado kind of effect. We'll use Blender 4.3 to make use of the new For Each Element zone, which will give us the ability to add variation to these light rings, making this a really cool but simple design. Let's get started. All right, so with our cube selected, let's go into the Geometry Nodes tab, click New, and we don't need the cube itself, so click the Group Input. X to delete that Shift A, and we'll add a mesh line. And option shift, click that to connect to the group output. Now we've got this vertical line here. And there's actually 10 points. You can see the vertex count up here. We've got 10 vertices. So on those points, we can shift A to add an instance on points. And we're going to use a mesh circle here. So now every point gets this circle. We can squash that down a bit by changing this offset. So let's bring that down pretty low. And let's increase the count as well. We'll tweak these values quite a bit to get something we're happy with. But for now, that's pretty good. What I want to do next is scale these, like give give these rings uh, some variety in the scale. So um, Shift A to bring in a scale instances node here. And for the scale, we'll bring that, we'll connect that to a random value. And we get some wonkiness here. We've got like ovals, and that's because uh, it's three dimensions are being scaled. We just want like, uh, uniform scale across XYZ. So let's do a float here. I'll have to reconnect that to the scale. But now we've got, we retain the circle shape of these mesh circles. But let's look at the top here. So we're scaling these from zero. So some of them are actually scaled to zero and completely gone. So let's bring that up. And by changing this minimum scale, we can give this some width. It's kind of like a cylinder, essentially. And with that width, it'll give it some dimension as it spins around and it'll look really cool. So maybe something like that, 0.64. And I want to look at this. Yeah, I want it a lot more dense. So let's bring the count up quite a bit and let's squish this down some more. Yeah, 0.02. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now what I want to do is for each of these rings, I want to remove some of the edges, um, not the points, like I don't want the resolution to change. What I want to do is just disconnect, like break up each of these rings. So notice how I said for each, and that's where Blender 4.3 is super cool because now we have this for each element zone. This is similar to like a simulation zone or uh, a repeat zone. So we've got these instances coming in here if we connect that back up to the geometry, uh, you can see that we have each instance, but for each instance, we want to delete some of those edges. So let's bring in the delete geometry, change that to an edge. The selection right now is set to true, I believe, for every edge. So let's add that to a random value. And we've got, we can tweak this probability. So probability zero means nothing will be deleted. Probability one is everything will be deleted. So you just got to find some value in there where it it's kind of like you like the design of it. Now notice though that it's the same edges for every single ring. Well, how do we change the variety of that so that every ring has a different randomized probability. Well, that's super easy. We've got this index output here in the for each element. That index represents the index here. So every ring has an index. It's or it's like its order. So index being like the first ring, the second ring, the third ring. So for each element gives us that value. And so for the first ring, for the second ring, for the third ring, we want a different seed. So if we connect that to the random values seed input, now you can see how every ring is broken up into a completely random edges being deleted. So we can change that probability until it looks kind of like how you want it. Some of these lines are, or some of these edges are still pretty intact. Uh, and then some of them are broken up quite a bit. So let's get the camera set up here to start composing this shot. And we'll click the camera. Actually, let's just go to front view. Let's center this here. And now that we're in front view, let's do a view align view, align active camera to view. I'll make sure that this um, light tornado kind of thing fills this camera's viewport. So what we can do is shift A to add a transform geometry. 
And then we can just select all these, click and drag down, hold shift, and we'll start to scale that up. Something like that. And we can translate this down on the Z axis as well. So it comes down. And we got some extra. We can try if we want to squish this, maybe point zero, uh, 0 0.01. And let's do some back and forth here, tweaking this. Kind of like that, something, something like that. These are all things that we can tweak as well. We can stretch this out more. We can add um, more rings, add more edges back in, whatever it is that, uh, whatever we want to do for the final design. I think before we start to uh, animate this, let's try bringing a curve to mesh node. I believe this is still, I don't know what type of geometry is coming out here. Actually, it should be just instances, but let's try giving it a profile, a circle curve. It does not like that. What's this tooltip say? It curves into a mesh, actually. Oh, hold on. Oh, right. We used a mesh circle. We used a mesh circle over here. So it's, I think it's a mesh at this point. So let's do um, mesh to curve. Curve to mesh. Bring this radius way down. Okay, yeah, that fixes it. So let's go 005, maybe even like 002, something like that. Okay, so yeah, we have we have the profile now. So now we've actually got some geometry that would render on screen. Um, maybe fill caps. Yeah, let's fill caps. Okay, now let's, if we go to camera view, we can see that geometry. Um, let's start to spin this. If we rotate this on the Z axis, now we start to spin. That's looking kind of cool. So let's drive that rotation with uh, the scene time. So for this to be loopable, we need to um, spin this. 360 degrees uh, by the end of the animation. Right now we've got an end frame of 250 frames. So that means by the end of 250 frames, this needs to rotate 360 degrees. So let's specify that with um, some of these nodes here. Let's pull in a scene time and the frame. So let's bring in a math shift A for a math node and let's do some math here. Uh, let's do divide. So if we take the frame and uh, let's say it's frame zero or frame one and divided by 250 frames that'll give us the percentage of this loop like it's either zero percent or it's 50 percent done the loop or it's 100 percent done and with that percentage we can say um, another math note here this time we'll times it though we'll take that percentage so like 0.5 percent and we'll times that by tau, which is 360 degrees. And we only want this to be on the Z axis or the Z axis. So we'll combine this into all the way down here, combine Z, and we'll take that vector output and put that into the rotation. Now, if we hit spacebar to play, you can see that our tornado, our light tornado is starting to rotate. If you want to slow it down or speed it up, we can try um, tweaking this frame. But every time we tweak, tweak the frame, like if we say instead of 250 frames, maybe 120 frames, it's going to have to spin a lot faster. But we've changed this frame here, and this frame needs to stay in sync with this value here. So let's right click, copy as new driver, right click here, and then paste the driver. So now whenever we change 120 here, you can see that this purple section stays in sync as well. So that will let us adjust the duration of this loop. And if you shift left arrow to go back to the start of the animation and press spacebar to play, now you can see that it's going a lot faster, maybe too fast. So we'll slow it down to, I don't know, 300 maybe. And there's our spin there. It's kind of cool because there is some depth to this. And if you want a bit more depth, you can always tweak, you can always tweak the scale here and give it a smaller minimum scale. I think I like that. All right, so now that we've got this turning, let's start to give it some material. And to do that, we'll go into the materials tab here and we'll set that material at the very end here. Shift A to set material. Click that, drop down to material. And it's just going, for now, it's just gonna be like something basic, like a green strength 30. And then in here, we'll go to the rendered view. And actually let's dial back this, um, world strength is zero. We don't need the spreadsheet. So let's go to the compositor instead, press N to get rid of that sidebar, click use nodes, zoom in here, and let's shift A to add a uh, glare node. And we'll have to come up over to this drop down and set the compositor to always. 
and let's bring this down to a bloom high quality and let's try playing around with this a bit something like that for now and i want to actually change the camera's uh, focal length so select the camera click the cameras tab here let's get that focal length see how we do that these lines these lines here become a lot more uh, angled. So I want like, I want a bit of distance, not too much. So 11.5. And then we'll go back here to geometries, uh, to the geometry nodes tab. And this transform, maybe we'll just try scaling this up even further and bringing that down. I kind of want to try, let's see, can we squash that? If we can't squash that too much, um, maybe 0 0.005. Can I just like shift this whole thing up? Yeah, maybe that's a good way to do it there. Um, what happens if we bring the count up? Yeah, a little bit more, just so there's some extra rings at the top there. I wonder if, what if we gave these, yeah, let's do like, uh, like 120. So now we have a lot more edges, a lot more vertices on the circles. I think the scale's too big now. Like if we go to the top, it's way too wide or it's too thick there. So let's, the uh, random value here, let's adjust this minimum. So it's not so thick like that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, and maybe what we'll do now is we'll go into the shading. Let's give this a bit of variation. So let's shift A and we'll bring in a color ramp, plug that into the emission color. And let's also do the compositor there. So it's always rendered. Okay, and then let's get like two colors going. Something like that for now. And then what we can do is bring in a um, texture coordinate node. We'll plug in, I think it might be generated that we want. Yeah, it looks like, looks like that's going blue to green. So let's actually separate out one of these components. Is it X? Y, Z, that's not working the way I expected. So maybe what we should do, let's go to the geometry nodes tab here. And we have this scale. Let's, uh, let's set a property. Let's store a named attribute there. And we'll take this scale value and we'll plug that into the value there. It's float. Um, I think we want it on, uh, let's leave it on point for now. Yeah, let's leave it on point for now. And we'll say this is the scale. So what this will do is this will capture the value that's assigned to the instance. And different instances have different widths or different scales, essentially. But let's use that scale now to go into shading. And instead of the texture coordinate, let's bring in a named or an attribute node. And we'll call it scale. And we'll take the factor and plug that into this separate X, Y, Z. I think there might be a problem with uh, this stored store named attribute trying to get a value from outside the for each element. Okay, I'm going to do some rearranging because something's not working here. I'm going to option drag this scale instances, bring that into this for each element. And what happens if I plug that into the scale? It's uniform now, but if we take this index and plug it into the seed, now we get that scale there. And then what happens if I take that and plug it in to the store named attribute for here on the instance. Okay, so we've got green and purple there. Um, let's go back to the shading. So there is some variation there. So let's back this off. Okay, so now we've got now we've got a mix of colors. Okay, so now we've got color variety. These lines are really thick. Let's jump back to geometry nodes. And let's change the curve circle. That's fine. Let's just do 001. Not bad, not bad. We can play with the glare node over here just to get a bit more bloom if we want. That looks pretty cool. 
Okay, so we can see the um, the red to blue gradient, which is cool. Got a bit of purple in the middle. I think what I'd want to try is giving this a um, bit of volume here. Go to the volume tab. We'll do a principled volume. And that's too much. I can't really see in the background the edges anymore. So if we go to the density and uh, let's see, <laughs> drag that down. Now we can start to fade that background out just a bit. All right, and this should seamlessly loop at 300. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's go into the render tab, color management at the bottom, and let's change the look to punchy. Punchy's pretty good. If you hold control and middle mouse scroll, you can go through these options without having to click and select and click and select. I think I like, I think I like medium high contrast. It looks pretty good. Um, we can bring in a hue saturation value node though, and we can try playing with the saturation a bit. Just increasing that a little bit. And I think, I think what I want to do is select the camera and go to the camera tab here. And in the viewport display, let's crank the passport to passport two to almost 100%. So yeah, let's bring that, let's pin this here. Let's bring that down just a little bit. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Now I think we can change the scale if we want to see more of the outside, like over here. That's looking pretty good. We've got a weird light sitting there. So let's just select that and press X to delete that. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Looks like a kind of data flow kind of thing. I like that you can see the different colors here through the gradient. Um, let's start to prep this for rendering. If we go to the render tab, uh, I think everything should be good. We can check ray tracing. We've got EV um, output, we'll say, will be a FFmpeg video. We'll encode it to Matroshka H.264. High quality, in fact, maybe perceptually lossless. Post processing is good. Um, Oh, let's do the, uh, tw instead of 24 frames per second, let's do 30 frames per second. So that'll give us 10 seconds. We've got 300 frames, it's a 10 second loop. And it'll look a little bit smoother as we play it back. And then you should be able to just go to render and render animation. All right, here's the final result. If you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And if you want to keep learning geometry nodes, check out this tutorial right here. Just click and enjoy.